You don't need Botox at all. Wait, wait, wait I don't even I use this word, but I have to use it now. Ow. Ow. <laughs> 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 Who wants to go with me to get their faces frozen? <laughs> me. Yeah, you get a good price? Yeah, I do, actually. I need it. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Good evening. I'm Rashawn Broadnax. Oh, wait a minute. I was about to say, wait. I that was got good. my phone out. <laughs> you better do that again. Hold on, Rashawn Bro. Hold on. Right. Hold on. That was a Hold setup. <laughs> okay. Good evening. I'm Rashawn Broadnax. I'm Riley Knox. I'm Ernest Collins. I'm Shayna Taylor. <laughs> Hi, I'm Alvin King, and this is We Speak. Ooh. I had a whole bunch oh, of with all my spit. Just We Spit. What's the new line? Oh, it goes. I'm sorry. And what is the We Spit? And, we spit. <laughs> <laughs> and this is We Spit. Um. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> I'm laughing at Shayna's behind, oh, and I'm man. over here going. Excuses don't play. Shut up, Alvin. Okay, I'm ready. Okay. Four, three, two. Hi, I'm Alvin King, and this is We Speak. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to We Speak. Again, I'm Alvin King, and I'm very happy to be here this evening for another episode as we uh, have, are now into season five. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. Season yeah. Five. That's, that's right. Um, so we're going to jump right off to our, our topics today. This is really our producer's corner, ladies and gentlemen. So all of our questions tonight have come from our producer. So get ready, because he is... Uh, off the chain. And we've got an unlimited okay. amount of time. So it's it's <laughs> wait, unlimited. Wait, wait. The time is unlimited. unlimited we can because just, just I, well, well, when we start, the time is going to start. Okay, when we start. Okay. Um, <laughs> there's been a trend of interracial families being featured in television ads for things like detergent, vacations, breakfast series, etc. Do you feel uh, this is just advertisers, advertisers attempting to show what society truly reflects, or is it a gimmick to bring attention to, to their products? What do you think? I'm trying to think how it could actually bring attention. If, so you're thinking that people are going to sit back and say, did you see that biracial couple or that mixed couple with the Cheerios? Like that, like that would bring attention to make people remember their product? Well, I think like places like or stores or ads like Ikea, for example. I think, and Target now does it. I mean, I, I don't know, something stands out to me. Well, I know the producer said interracial, but I'm just gonna say a um, same-sex couple. Oh, you well know? that's different, okay. But, okay but that, that's, that, that's different. Those kind of things stand out. Um, for me personally, when it comes to interracial couples, you know, I live in a neighborhood where I live, it's, it's interracial. I mean, so I don't, nothing's new to me. I expect it right now in this climate, so. I think it's more so of the advertisers trying to say that this product is number one for everybody and it's also representative of the family units today. It's not so one or the other. So years ago, when you looked at, say, a detergent commercial, you may see the Caucasian lady with her, you know, kind of bell skirt and, you know, and her gloves. And that was representative of the Caucasian housewife, you know, the, the depiction of that. The, the, right. Right. And so, and that's who they were trying to sell to. So when you saw it, you said, oh, that's me, and now I can use this product. That product is for me. Right. And so now they're doing the same thing. They're using the uh, blended families because there are so many. And so as they, the families watch it and they say, oh, th they look like us. You know, the dad may be black, the mom may be white, and they have a, you know, child whose skin complexion is somewhere in the middle. You know, that looks like us and that product is probably for us as well. So it's a, it's the a kid that looks like right. somewhere. But, you know, uh, okay. but even in some commercials, you know, you may have an Asian child right. and then, you know, a right. Hispanic I was thinking, child. I was thinking of when you were saying, right. I was thinking of a, a, a adopting, you know, right. adopting. Right. Yeah. You're like, they could not have had that baby. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, that Same, baby, that that baby is well. not a product. Right. But it's not gonna, it's not gonna make me want to buy, buy a product that I gotta put together a thousand pieces. Right, but, like, it's just but it is great for inclusion. It I've is. talked about I like that, yeah, yeah, inclusion. Yeah. And I've talked about being biracial on the show before. But the great thing is, you know, 
had I, when I was a kid, had commercials that Seen showed it. families that were mm -hmm. like my family, then it would have been great because I remember being uh, in, in elementary school, I remember getting dropped off um, and I remember someone saying to me, um, are you adopted? And I said, no. And they said, who brings you to school? It's like my dad. And they were like, oh, like they didn't get it. But the fact that now we see there was, there's this commercial that um, it's, it's a, I think it might be for depression or something like that. And it's this white guy and his biracial daughter. They show him with the three of them first, um, with the black mom, and then they show him taking her out and all, you know, that, I think it's great to include that. Yeah. Everyone in oh, the black well, woman, the black woman in his life are making him depressed. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he's not showing him like the same like no energy or something like that. Right. And he's showing how he can do things with his daughter now. Now, what was funny is, is they showed the mom at the beginning, but they didn't show her towards the end. As opposed to if they had just had this little black girl right. with her, this white guy, and they're going to the ice cream store and the mom and the, all like all these different things. Like or if they had never showed the mom, I, it would have been like, huh? I can't you know? take it no more. I'm leaving. Yeah. I think it's good marketing though because you turn on tell. I mean, for me. It doesn't matter who's selling it, I'm not gonna buy it. Right. But to get me to watch it, it has to be funny or something that's gonna grab my attention. So if I see a interracial couple and their kids, it's gonna make me focus more on the commercial, whatever it is that's on at that time. So I kind of think it's like, I mean, in my opinion, it's like a marketing scheme as well. But I think it's different for marketing. everyone. I think because maybe, you don't see that all right. the time. Maybe for you, it might be a marketing scheme, but then for me, it's like, oh, there's people like me. You know what I mean? That were right, like my right, family. Right, right, right. And if I were younger and I said seen that as a, as a kid, then it would have been like, oh, you know, mm -hmm. that's nice to see because that's how my right, family is. Right. Well, you think about like, we're just on the heels of the royal wedding. And if you watch the story, like I've been consuming all okay. just before. Yeah. <laughs> but that, 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 no, you go here because that, that's another whole topic. That, 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 that's we a go, but you go right here. We'll it finish just your, made your me question. think yeah. of like, you know how when they do the stories of the couple before and they talked about Meghan uh, Markle's upbringing, how she had such a hard time as a child because she didn't quite understand her, the fact that she was biracial. She knew her dad was white, her mom was black, but she said that when she was with her mom, there were several things that happened, like she counted um, this one story. She said, I think her and her mom had gone to a dance at her school and they had the best time. She was like, we're you know, on cloud nine, we're going to pull out the parking lot and this guy calls her mom the N-word. So she said it made her mom so upset that she started to clench the steering wheel and she started to cry. But then it transferred to Megan. She was like, I hate seeing my mother like this. So she got very upset and she just dealt with that, you know, throughout her life. So, but it was also because she did not recognize other people that were like her. Right. Yeah. And so I think that does speak to like your point that if you do see people who resemble you and, and I think that transfers to all facets of life you know just like now I'm sure lots of little black boys will believe honestly that they can be the president Absolutely. because well, they've seen it yeah yeah or they'll think that they'll get shot up in the street dead and he's an exception well, to the rule but it's it's, well, it's weird but it's great that they can finally get right. something to be happy about and now a little black girl can think and know that she could actually be royalty well <laughs> First of all, she should always think that she's royalty. Her well, parents true. should make her think she don't have to be Meghan Markle. But again, that 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 that's a whole nother. Oh, because I, I, I was getting ready to okay, go down because, that road. Because if, <laughs> if, if, if more families treated their daughters and sons like they were kings and queens, mm -hmm. then maybe some of this world with, or things that happen in this world might be different. Very but, true. But to keep that subject on. Um, trying this, to beat uh, me. <laughs> 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 whoa, 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 whoa. Um, I'm sorry, so you, 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 you made me go down that road. We're talking <laughs> about advertisers. No, I think advertisers, they have to do this because when you think of shows like, you know, This Is Us. Mm -hmm. This Is Us has been a melting pot for just showing different types of families and cultures. And right. I mean, the way they intertwine relationships, um, the they relationships and, and, and all. And then to have their star, you know, he's African-American who was actually, uh, 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 we call it, um, adopted by a family who had twins. And so, mm -hmm. who, and who, all of that should make advertisers step up to the plate. Mm -hmm. And anything that has an interracial, um, uh, what do you call it, feel to it, they, they should jump on it and, and see if they can make it work for their brand. Absolutely. I, I, think, I think that would be a best thing to do. Um, recently, our producer came across another article that says that women who are not provided 
paid maternity leave from their jobs are using crowdfunding sites to supplement their income while they take time off from their newborn babies. People are also doing it for things like vacations, birthdays, celebrations, and even funerals. What do you, what do you guys think of that, basically creating a, a go? I mean, a GoFundMe. A GoFundMe. <laughs> there was such a, 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 a here to there, like the GoFundMe is, is for a reason and it's yeah. purposeful. So I'm like, maternity leave, okay, perhaps, maybe. Funeral, okay, but you said vacation. <laughs> People use it for all kinds Boob of stuff. Boob jobs, butt jobs. Like I feel like you have the right to use it for whatever you rent. want, but we also have the right to not to donate not do because it. we think right. it's yeah. Come on, right. Right. Exactly. Like, agreed. Exactly. Don't agreed. be so gullible. But do what about homework. people who actually set out to deceive? Like yes. I knew someone who set up this mm -hmm. whole GoFundMe and said, oh, you know, I am, well, the first time it was, <laughs> I'm, going, I'm going to law school finally, and I want you to contribute. But then it was, I'm no longer working, I lost my job, and now I can't pay my bills. Delete. This is the same person? <laughs> the same delete. person. Delete. I don't, delete. I'm, I'm going to delete you because something in there says that I'm going to let you get your act together a little bit <laughs> before, I, before I donate some money to you. And I, I've seen those stories. I've seen, I've seen, I might have a couple of people in my... <laughs> <laughs> you, that. you say go find you before right you, go, you, before you ask and, me to go exactly. find you but 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 you have Riley has a point i mean come on you got to do your homework well, you can't I agree. You know, but, you can't, can't, but how do you actually know you really don't you really you don't, don't. It has to and be so that. it makes me say to myself do i even want to go down that road or i mean i can liken that to almost you walk past the person on the street who asks you for money and then you want to know, or they, they have a sign that may say I'm homeless, but mm. then do you actually know? You know, but then what do you do? Well, do you... Mm. Well, you know, I've and, heard of and lots so of different And so take that charities. and then put it back on the GoFundMe yeah. and say the yeah. same thing. I, I, I've heard of lots of charities where people are, like, pocketing the money, so you never really know where it's going anyway, mm -hmm. you know. Well, I've heard people, too, I've, I've seen some GoFundMe pages, like, you know, GoFundMe because I'm a... A starving actor and you know I I want to be a better actor and the only mm -hmm. way I can do it is if I create a GoFundMe page um, that kind of thing I kind of go okay that that kind of makes sense we do have starving artists mm -hmm. out here mm -hmm. and if you get money great it won't be Alvin King's money but <laughs> if you okay cuz I'm waiting I'm like, <laughs> I'm like I'm not gonna do that I'm, I'm not if, especially if I don't know you and yes. if I don't know that you're an artist that speaks to yeah. Riley's point. Right. You can do, you can set up whatever you right. want, right. and right. it's up right. to me I'm, to decide yeah. whether I want to yeah. give you money or not. And I agree with Riley too. Just like the man on the corner, if you have a sign, I act like I can't read. I don't understand <laughs> what it says. You know? But if I can have a conversation with you and I get a feel, or maybe it's something a little closer, because I, I, I just don't go handing money out in yeah. the GoFundMe thing. Yeah. I've contributed once or twice, but I'm. I ignore all this stuff. Yeah, I, I, it has to be a feeling within for me to get my money up. To be honest, yeah. with you. I have to really feel that it's necessary, not. You know. Because there's so many things out there and so many scams. And speaking of newborns, uh, the Today Show host. Who was speaking of newborns? Who <laughs> 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 was it? Was he right here speaking of newborns? Well, I was like, okay. Well, some of the GoFundMe pages was for maternity leave. Uh, okay, wow. right? He said it. Wow. You're right. He said it. He said it. <laughs> she has a point. Tony, I'm trying to catch the continuity errors. So I'm just saying, I just. So. <laughs> I'm sending y'all the damn script, okay, Thank before you. before we come on board, so y'all can, okay, don't say, I ain't getting no email. I thought he was going to stick okay. something in about newborns. Okay, <laughs> okay, hold on. Can, can I just say these are day show hosts? Hold on. Yeah, okay, you. okay. Thank you. Okay, let me know. Give me a count, please. The uh, Today Show host, hold a copy, adopted a baby girl uh, recently, and she named it Hallie Joy. The 53-year-old newswoman says that she's happier than she's ever thought possible. We celebrate the fact that she's done this, but do you think that it's selfish for a woman of a certain age to adopt a newborn baby? She'll be 65 when her daughter turns 12 years old. I don't think it's selfish. I think if you have the love in your heart to give to someone else, no matter what age you are. Um, by the way, we people are living longer and you know, 65 doesn't always look like what 65 mm -hmm. used to look like. Come on now, that's you right. Know? Um, so, you know, to each their own. You know, if she can still get on the floor and play with her daughter at that age, then so be it. I'm, I'm off, do, do what you have to do. I mean, that's, I wish you were my mama. 
I've had that conversation before too, and I said I would never have a child at a certain age. It takes me back to when I was in elementary school and we have back to school night, and your parents come. And I remember <laughs> a real story. I remember one time we were sitting here, okay. and somebody's father walked in. He's like, "Oh man, whose grandfather is that?" <laughs> but it was my boy's father. Kids are cruel, so I, I, I say you have to be mindful of all situations and at all times. It, to me, it wouldn't be fair for me to have a child at my age, and then knowing I'm going to be 60 or 70 years old when they're in junior high school or you know ending elementary. Well, but but come on, 65. Look look at hold a copy. I mean, look at her. The, the fifty, the fifty is new forty or whatever. Right. Thirty is the new forty. I mean, I, so it's really about how you feel. But I mean, I, definitely, I'm, I'm not saying anything against your personal preference for not wanting to have kids <laughs> and being an old man. But you're not gonna look like a grandpa. Like you're not gonna look like a grandpa going to back to school. Like I get yeah, it. Yeah, because I'm not gonna go. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, you, you're not gonna look like that man who like walked that. into that school. Yeah. I guarantee you. Hoda is also rich enough to have Thank you. somebody if she awesome. gets Absolutely. it. And you know, it could happen. You you know, you could just be young and then something happens to you and you're not able to right. take care of the kid and you're, you know, disabled in whatever right. way. But she's got enough money to have a but nanny right. or somebody that's If you can support and you can still yeah. partake in the activities. As long but as you're not breastfeeding. Money, you're average money. 50 <laughs> <laughs> but money I mean, aside, really. what's wrong with wanting to have it all? Uh, so she has devoted her, you know, most of her life to her career. Yeah. And she has built, you know, herself up. Let's just keep saying money aside, but right. she has worked. And she said, I've devoted myself to my career and put my maternal thing to the side. And now I'm ready to do that because soon I'm going to be retiring. So now I'm ready to have my child. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to do it simultaneously. I wanted to do it consecutively. Hats off to you, Hoda. Oh, I love that. Okay. So are you thinking that maybe she should have adopted an older kid? Well, you know, these are producers' questions. So <laughs> I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm going I'm to shift it back. On, on, I'm, and again, I think do what you have to do in the time that you feel like you have that you need and have to do it. And I mean, mm -hmm. I I don't I see it. I, I don't have no problem with it. Again, I wish I was uh, her son. <laughs> you know, once happened, this is what happens. <laughs> That's all I'm you saying. Achieve your happiness. I have no That's problem, and I mean this in a very, uh, you know, family way. Yeah, I agree. All right. Hi, Mom. Hold on. <laughs> Before we take a commercial break, uh, we'd like to take a moment to uh, say congratulations to our Mayor Bowser, who has recently uh, adopted a child. Congratulations, Mayor Bowser, and we do wish you much success on your new mommyhood. Thank you from the Castle We Speak. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be right back. Thanks for keeping your mouth shut. <laughs> Thanks for minding your own business. Come on, show me the good ones. Thanks for not telling my girlfriend. Send that to me. Hi! Thanks for not telling anyone. When you do nothing, you're helping him. But when you do something, you help her. Thanks for telling the bartender. Thanks for stopping him. Thanks for telling HR. Thanks for getting help. Who will you help? Stop sexual harassment and violence when you see it. We are the United States of Women. The United States of Women. And when we do better, everyone does better. You with us? Then listen up. This is our movement. Turning struggle into strength. We're not done. We're definitely not done. We are the United States of Women. The United States of Women. And we stand stronger when we stand together. Together we got this. We got this. So I've come up with the family emergency plan. Great. What is it? It's difficult to talk about, so I'm not telling you. How will we know what to do? You won't. 
I'm so glad I won't have to remember anything. And me too. Thanks for this, sweetie. Talk to your kids about who to call, where to meet, what to pack. Search Ready Kids at nyc.gov or call 311. Because I love you, I want to be your only guy. Because I love you, skip class with me. Let's stay in bed today. Because I love you, I just want to be with you so freaking much. Because I love you. I waited for you after chem lab. You were walking with Mark? Because I love you. You shouldn't be hanging out with that dude. You should know how dumb that makes me look. I don't care if she's your lab partner. Why do you have texts from him? Because I love you. This number? Delete. Because I love you. This Jason number? Delete. And, and Ben? Delete. Because I love you, I should smash your phone. I'll let you give me your password instead. Because I love you. I will check your texts every day. You got lucky. Because I love you. Because I love you. You think it's okay. Because I love you. Y you understand. Because I love you, you stop talking to your classmates. And you feel completely alone. Because I love you. That's not love. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this is uh, We Speak, our fifth season, and we are glad to be here. USA Today has reported that a disturbing new sex trend called stealthing is on the rise. It involves men secretly taking off their condom during consensual sex. A new study in the Columbia Journal of Gender and Law points to an online forum where men brag about stealthing and even share tips on how to get away with it. Stealthing, of course, can lead to um, the transfer of sexually transmitted diseases and pregnancy. Duh. Oh. Should this be considered a form of sexual assault? Yes, and it's not new. <clears throat> it should be illegal. It I, is. I, it's, I it's a form concur. of rape. It's rape. Because it's not, like, it's consensual. You consent it to have sex, sex with, with a, a condom. condom on. And it's not a new thing. There's actually, like, Tumblr pages devoted to it and... Yeah. and and Tell me websites the name of this thing and all that stuff. Selfie. Selfie. Where the person either breaks the condom because you're like, you know, maybe this is so graphic. Right. If you're not, like, you're not you, paying attention. Well, like, say if you're doing it in a certain position <laughs> mm -hmm. Ow. and you can't see them and they pull out, they but what's the rip point? the or pull it off and then, sh you know. Because. Because they, they want to feel the. Yeah. Right. They want the Ew. absence of the condom. It's not a new so. thing, but <laughs> yeah. it's disgusting. It's know. crazy. I'm scared. I mean, me of all people, I don't even know what to say about this. Yeah. I can't even chime in. I'm yeah. just like, why? I mean, so why would it, unless you want to harm and deceive somebody? I well, agree. That, 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 I that, agree. that is the main sense. goal. There is porn that, that, that is dedicated is to it. That's how big it is. To all of that, you want to deceive the individual mm -hmm. that you're with. So because, because and so I need to know. That, that there's no nothing else to that right. except to be He's deceptive, go to jail or something, yeah. or be held accountable for, for that kind of thing. That's stupid. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or you stealthing people. So that's, that's not good. <laughs> Did they just make that name up? Because I'm, I've never It's heard not a new thing, and it's, no, they didn't just make It's always it been called stealthing? Mm -hmm. so, so the funniest thing is I had to look it up, because I'm like, what's the true definition of stealth? You got mm -hmm. it. It is. It's ca cautious, cautious action or movement. Huh? <laughs> so again, what is the it, point? It, it, it First of all, the person's stupid because they don't even know. They don't even know the shit. true definition of it. Well, yeah, I, I, I thought what? Well, okay, okay stealth, so stealth. yes, stealth. but I would say I mean, like, if I had to make the correlation, to be like, I thought initially like stealth bomber to be unseen. Right, you're like you're you know? cautious about. So yeah. stealthing oh. would be to do this unseen because you know that the the person whom you're having sex with does not see that you're doing it, which is adding to the person's excitement. Well, the know? verb is definitely in Wikipedia. Or to, this new to, to their reason for doing it, I should say. And it's, just 20, it's funny because it says, the practice of removing the condom during sex without the partner's knowledge or consent. And it says 2017. Mm -hmm. So this is a <laughs> this is a new name that they've put on right, it. It just so made the dictionary. Yeah, right. people have been doing yeah, it, yeah. but apparently somebody it created no this. 
It well, makes no um, sense at all. And they give a definition, and, and they use it in a sentence. That's what's hilarious. Oh, <laughs> Viewers, I'm going to go on, on record and say, be careful, please. Be careful who you're mm -hmm. sleeping with. And if, you know, if they do say that, that they have on a, if keep you checking. are using right, a condom, keep, keep checking. checking. Reach back. Be careful. Take responsibility for, for your actions as well. Because, so now, yeah. yeah. Okay, so now as a West Coast girl, I'm thinking about Ice Cube's song. <laughs> yeah, because he says, I come real stealth, dropping bombs on your moms. Yeah, but he but didn't mean that. He did, I don't know. No, he did not. Because he if he said, comes I come. real stealth, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not like, oh, wow. he comes secretly. Oh, Listen. Wow. Like, like, how old is this song? I, I, it's old. <laughs> it's old. So way back when. They, they, so like Riley said, they've been doing it a long time. Yeah, they've been doing it a long time. It's just now. I'm we're wondering, talking I wonder, about it. I, think I wonder, it's I wonder just if Cube was thinking thing. about that. You know, that people. You don't think so? Call him. O'Shea. I really oh, trying to I, I, I just, it's ooh. It's just, it's like, <laughs> it's you know, disgusting ooh. and, and it's, you it's should disgusting be. It's disgusting and I just, ooh. Yeah. It should be illegal. It okay. is illegal. Okay. Well, you know what? That's what I was going to say because isn't it illegal to, um, say, for a person with uh, HIV to have sex with someone else who does not? Correct. And not, not tell them? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To me, one and the, the same. Same thing. Correct. It's one and the same. One it's, in the same. One, one, well, but because I'm having sex with you under false pretenses, mm -hmm. actually, because I'm assuming, or I know we started with a condom. Now where to go? <laughs> okay, and I and I'm going to say where to go. I'm, I'm, I'm lost in the Okay, <laughs> I'm going to say on the um, telling someone that you're HIV mm -hmm. in, in regards to to this. If a person asks you, mm -hmm. and you say no, okay. That you should be held accountable for that. For that, okay. But if you just arbitrarily have sex with someone without asking that question or protecting yourself, right? Then True. Where, where, you have to take responsibility for it. Absolutely. So, but it's if a person asks you, and, don't, and, don't and ask, don't tell. Don't. I'm, I'm just saying, <laughs> somebody. We, we, we gotta share the responsibility here. True. Now, and I'm not. I'm not saying that the person who who is who is um, HIV positive um, should do it without telling the person. I'm mm -hmm. not advocating that. Right. I'm saying there's two ways to handle this. Now, I would agree, I would agree with you, or I do agree with you. Now, I'm just thinking if I go to court and on both sides, I have one person saying they did not tell me. If I'm the court, I'm gonna look at you have a disease that would possibly kill someone. Do you not think that you have an obligation or to tell, it. To tell them? Now, that's just a question. I'm just saying. Well, and I'm going to say the person who, whatever that actor's name is, who's on Two and a Half Men, who, uh, Sheen. Uh, Sheen, oh, Sheen. who oh, had so. sex with the girl mm -hmm. who didn't tell her. Yeah. She said didn't tell her. Mm -hmm. His his attorney said, well, you didn't ask. Mm -hmm. He's not in jail. It's your responsibility to protect yourself. I, point blank. I, I, I think the totally whole world, agree. And I think the whole world got something. Now, that's just right. 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 Now, that's very true. Now, 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 is that just with HIV? No, or, or, no. It's, like, it's, if you have any STD, it shouldn't it be an expectation right. that exactly. you disclose. Exactly. Really? Right. Now, I didn't, know, I didn't even know that it was. Should you disclose? Well, what if you're pregnant and you have sex with a man? Should you tell him that you're pregnant? That's know. a good question, but, uh, <laughs> but why would he? Well, yeah, yeah, I was about to say why. Sure, but he, like maybe he doesn't want it. So like, that he knows he's having going a there and there's a baby. Like, in there. <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't know. I'm just saying you could open up for a lot. Then. It is. I just I I think there's two ways to to look at that. You know, I mm -hmm. mean, and again, I ain't advocating. And that's what I'm just know, saying. There's not two telling different people ways about to look you, at whatever. It. Yeah, I got. Yeah, I got. No, I was going to say some Lord on the air. Um, <laughs> All right, we can. Do um, you know what I mean? What were you going to say? No, no, I was going to say. I was going to get in the heads of somebody else telling somebody that, but I don't know how this might by air. Somebody take this little stick. Right. Oh, Alvin said he got mm -hmm. right. Recently, a beautiful young Instagram model named Tajaya received a uh, DM message from a young lady. The message read, and I quote: "Can you please block the guy that I am dating from your Instagram?" He is screen shooting your pics and saving them <laughs> in his phone. It's crazy. Was this the right approach uh, for this young lady to do? Side note, Tajaya blocked both of them. <laughs> okay. Well, she got what she wanted. Yeah, exactly. She got what she wanted. <laughs> so now you're blocked and he's blocked too. Mm -hmm. well, all she wanted crazy. was for her to block him, so she got that. But how old are these people? And why that's is this even question. an issue? 
Right. Was she just jealous of, of the fact I'm that he was sure. doing it? Then she, it's her responsibility talk to, to talk to your man, not to me, about yeah. what screenshot. I screenshot things all the time, save them on my phone all the time, and I'm sure people screenshot things in my... It's like, you can't control that. And he's going to find that's, somebody else that's to a screenshot. Dumb, yeah. That is the <laughs> dumbest thing ever. <laughs> this, just, this, this, this scenario just speaks to the culture that we live in. But, as far as social media and all this stuff, like that you actually have to have a conversation and say, could you block him? So like, that's so dumb. I don't want him looking at your pictures. Brian Grab his phone and you block it. I don't know. That's He's gonna find somebody that's, else's pictures. To that's ridiculous. It's called therapy. Mm. Get it. <laughs> that person, it miss, okay. It's just it's, social it's media. Called it's therapy. Called. Some, some of these people who on, have taken social media way too far with, you know, going with their little issues and concerns and trying to address issues when really, some things aren't what they really appear anyway. I would be too embarrassed to reach out to a, a woman. Absolutely. You look insecure. I look so as yeah. right. stupid. Right. Right. I can't right. control right. my man. Mm -hmm. I have a problem with him screen shotting pictures of you, mm -hmm. someone who he'll never meet. see and or meet. Mm -hmm. and, and I got a problem to the point that I'm going to contact you. Like, I would feel so stupid. That's not the model's stupid. problem or fault or even interest. Let's just sort well, of. Well, that's, th that's what she wants. She yeah. wants to mm -hmm. be. Mm -hmm. Clearly insecure. Oh, well, thing. That's just yeah. it. Well, um, the producers have uh, actually got a question that came from our Mr. Brodnax. Oh. Uh, that's right. Um, uh, this Brodnax or miss, the other Brodnax? <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. Brodnax <laughs> recently posed this question on his Facebook page. Some people are living with a spirit of pettiness that is indescribable. Mm. At what age are you too old for that? Or is pettiness ageless? It's ageless. ageless, and ageless. I got this petty spirit on me that I have been praying. Yeah, and I'm here trying for to pray all of off it. for the I'm last 17 age. years, and it ain't going nowhere. It's, it is ageless. I'm so petty, and in some ways timeless. It's classic. Pet, pettiness will be around until we all turn gray. I feel like you know I'm starting to remember the scenario that surrounds this, and I mm. feel like you may always be petty, but it should manifest in different ways as you move on in age. Oh, you should, your, your yeah. pettiness should mature as yes, you Yes, it should. Oh, yeah, I'm very yeah. maturely yeah. petty Yeah, now. me too. Yeah. Are, are, are so different? your petty, pettiness should not be the same petty that you were when you were 13. Give me an example. I was going to say, we have to define I was going to say, because, because, because I think are, 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 like, are, are there definitions of pettiness? Tell me a 13-year-old petty, and then tell me how you change that and progress it in, in an older age of petty. Okay, a 13-year-old petty would be something like, a scenario and you post it to social media. Yeah. Okay. okay. Screenshots of the text and post it to social media. Sixty year old petty. <laughs> oh maybe you went all through you. <laughs> Sixty year old church <laughs> petty. Okay, right? Oh, that, that's a fifty that that petty. <laughs> I mean to me it it just should not be so immature. Okay. That that that's the point. And so I guess even say let's change the word. At what age are you not acting 13-year-old immature? Well, for, for some people, unfortunately, that, that, that's their... No age. That, <laughs> that, 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 that is their, their, their makeup. Okay. That, that, that's how they feed themselves. That, that's how they um, roll with their insecurities. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they have to be petty. Some people put other people down. Some people look down on other Absolutely. people's successes. Some people... That's all a form of pettiness to mm -hmm. me. Because, you know, what God has for you is what God has for you. Yeah. But some people cannot see past that judging you mm -hmm. because they don't have what you have and really they couldn't have what you have. But see, when I think That's of petty, like like my petty you. comes in the form of like revenge. You know what I mean? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. that's, that's, that's where I'm petty. Not because of jealousy or anything like that. Well, I think I'm not petty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm serious. I'm, I'm, well, maybe you got to a point where you just don't care enough yeah. to be, be petty. It. And there's that certain scenarios where I do not care enough to... to even it's just too much energy in my yeah. I, I, just, I, I think you're right. It's circumstance. Because yeah. mm -hmm. I played cards with you before. Oh, then you're <laughs> petty. And you are petty. Yeah, you're petty. You are petty. I'm quiet. Okay, so you do petty things without talking. I, I don't let know. people like you <laughs> talk for me. I let you be the petty but, one. But your actions will be petty, though. Okay. Look, look, look. <laughs> I guess it's all about what makes us, right. what moves us to be petty. Because right. I'm, I'm sure there's something for everybody you're right, that'll you're right. make you petty. And and. Some forms of petty comes in the form of our pet peeves. Mm. You know, but things that, that don't work for us. Mm -hmm. And if it doesn't work for us, then we're gonna make a petty situation out of it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we don't even realize that until 
we've already gone through being petty. Do you have an example of that? Um, <laughs> yeah, I think. I think last I mean, week. <laughs> no, I think. Well, now I think, that you bring um, it up. <laughs> I, I think that everyone who gets in, I, I mean, I, I drive a pretty decent looking car. Okay. So I think everybody who gets in my car should respect that. Absolutely. And don't get in there eating. Does my car look like <laughs> it says eat in my car? <laughs> it doesn't say that. Does my car look like smoke in my car? Mm -hmm. um, I think people should respect that. So I'm petty about it because I won't, sometimes I won't say anything to you. But I don't think that's petty. So what's your petty behavior afterwards? My, that, that's it. That's it. What's the petty my, behavior? My, my petty behavior is I won't say something to you depending on who it is at the moment. Okay. I'll just go home and like not call you. That's passive or, or, aggressive. Or, 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 that's not petty. It is. It's a little bit of that yeah. too. Petty, but I, yeah, you know, true. if you need a ride to the store, I ain't going to uh -uh, take you. Maybe. You say, okay, I would no. take you. No, no, but you like to eat in the car. And causing them to, to spill something. <laughs> no, that's so a, you can yell at them. Oh, no, no, that's no, 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 no. That's attempted murder. I would take you, but you might get hungry along right. the way. <laughs> and, you know, that's I don't feel like that. And, 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 and the next time they ask for a ride, you know, that's what she just said. Like, I would take you, but you might. Yeah, exactly. That's been petty. What you're doing is passive aggressive. Okay, well, it's a passive aggressive pettiness. I think because I am I am being passive aggressive. I, I cannot I, I, I agree with you, but I think that's that may not be the best example, but that, that's a form of me being having a pet peeve and not, you know, and not, you know, taking it out on somebody else when I could just really say, don't eat in my car or mm -hmm. don't do this or don't do that. But so. the question is, why should you even have to? Because, like, I've seen your car. Yeah. And when you walk past the car, clearly you take good care of your car. And it's a nice car. So, well, but hold that thought because I'm going to take my petty self into a commercial break and I'm okay. going to come back and you can finish And I'm going to bring my petty back. You can bring your petty back. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we'll, we'll be right back. Thank you. Body language can tell you all sorts of things. someone is having a stroke know the sudden signs learn fast face drooping arm weakness speech difficulty time to call 911 and get them to a hospital immediately learn the body language and spot a stroke fast look I had a rough day at work I don't need you hassling me about my smoking hey I just smoke when I'm out with my friends yeah cigarettes are expensive but I work I pay my bills. I can afford it. You know, you gotta die something. Might as well be cancer. What are you passing along to your kids? Quit for yourself, for your family, for your legacy. For free help, call or go online. <coughs> Just a little cough. Nothing to worry about. That's it, bro. Oh, come on, bro. Sit down. Stand up. Legs crossed. Legs straight. Hands up. Hands out. Shake it all about. On your knees. On your front. On your back. Lay still. Stand up. Lay, lay crossed. Ha hands. Hands. <laughs> Stop resisting. It may seem like the lyrics to the hokey pokey. You do the hokey pokey and you turn around. But this is a list of commands you can often find issued by American police officers in their attempts to de-escalate a situation. In this example, the subject is a man sitting on a curb, calm, complying, doing his very best to somehow interpret a barrage of instructions coming from two officers who seem to be about on the same page as me and Dana Loesch. One officer orders him to extend his legs, another orders him to cross his legs. When he tries to comply with both, they pump him full of electricity. Now keep in mind this happened in Pennsylvania, the same state where 17 year old Antoine Rose was just shot in the back and killed by officer Michael Rosefeld, who by the way if you are just wondering is patiently awaiting trial in the comfort of his own home after the judge granted him unsecured bail meaning he had to pay nothing. Meanwhile Meek Mill was denied bond for popping a wheelie. The judge literally had to break the law to offer Rosefeld bail, seeing as how the Pennsylvania constitution states that in cases with possible life sentence bail shouldn't be offered. Ah but that's for another day. The point is, while some would like to blame police misconduct on a few bad apples or individual cases, this past week alone has proven that these examples are not isolated. They are happening at alarming rates 
across the country. Pennsylvania shows how frequently these incidents are occurring, yet most conservatives would rather debate just how compliant this man was, rather than face the blatant and obvious reality that sweeping comprehensive police reform is needed. Just think about it for a second. If this is what happens when someone is fully compliant, and this is what happens when someone flees from those who could potentially brutalize you for complying, where does that leave us? I'll tell you where, right here. The same place where every American should be protesting this injustice. Because as I have said till I'm blue in the face, this is why we kneel. Not to protest a song or a piece of cloth, or the military or even the man in the Oval Office. It's to say, hey, this isn't okay, people. So if you felt compelled to criticize the way Cap and other NFL players protested, then you better speak up on this because this is just another example of why they knelt and I am frankly sick to my back teeth of reporting on police abuse so I can't even begin to imagine how sick those are who are subject to it on a goddamn daily basis. Really, come on, whether you claim to bleed blue or not, how can you watch this video and be so willfully ignorant to think it's all right or say it's just procedure? All while white mass shooters are almost never apprehended with this level of violence, even after committing unimaginable atrocities. Enough with this shite already. Where is the civility here? Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, before we end our show tonight, uh, here is a moment of clarity. Dear future generations, I think I speak for the rest of us when I say, sorry. Sorry we left you with our mess of a planet. Sorry that we were too caught up in our own doings to do something. Sorry we listened to people who made excuses to do nothing. I hope you forgive us. We just didn't realize how special the earth was. Like a marriage gone wrong. We didn't know what we had until it was gone. For example, I'm guessing you probably know it as the Amazon desert, right? Well, believe it or not, it was once called the Amazon rainforest and there were billions of trees there, all of them gorgeous and... Oh, you don't know much about trees, do you? Well, let me tell you, trees are amazing. I mean, we literally breathe the air they are creating. They clean up our pollution, our carbon. They store and purify water, give us medicine that cures our diseases, food that feeds us, which is why I'm so sorry to tell you that we burn them down. Cut them down with brutal machines, horrific, at a rate of 40 football fields every minute. That's 50% of all the trees in the world gone in the last hundred years. Why? For this. And that wouldn't make me so sad if it weren't so many pictures of leaves on it. You know, when I was a child, I read how the Native Americans had such consideration for the planet that they felt responsible for how they left the land for the next seven generations. Which brings me great sorrow because most of us today don't even care about tomorrow. So I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry that we put profit above people, greed above need, the rule of gold above the golden rule. I'm sorry we use nature as a credit card with no spending limit, overdrafting animals to extinction, stealing your chance to ever see their uniqueness or become friends with them. Sorry we poison the ocean so much that you can't even swim in them. But most of all, I'm sorry about our mindset because we had the nerve to call this destruction progress. Hey, Fox News, if you don't think climate change is a threat, I dare you to interview the thousands of homeless people in Bangladesh. See, while, while you were in your penthouse nestled, their homes were literally washed away beneath their feet due to rising sea levels. And Sarah Palin, you said that you love the smell of fossil fuels. Well, I urge you to talk to the kids of Beijing who are forced to wear pollution masks just to go to school. See, you can ignore this, but the thing about truth is, it can be denied, not avoided. 
So I'm sorry, future generations. I'm sorry that our footprint became a sinkhole and not a garden. I'm sorry that we paid so much attention to ISIS and very little to how fast the ice is melting in the Arctic. I'm sorry we doomed you, and I'm sorry we couldn't find another planet in time to move to. I am... You know what? Cut the beat. I'm not sorry. This future, I do not accept it. Because an error does not become a mistake until you refuse to correct it. We can redirect this. How? Let me suggest that if a farmer sees a tree that is unhealthy, they don't look at the branches to diagnose it, they look at the root. So like that farmer, we must look at the root, and not to the branches of government, not to the politicians run by corporations. We are the root, we are the foundation, this generation. It is up to us to take care of this planet. It is our only home. We must globally warm our hearts and change the climate of our souls and realize that we are not apart from nature, we are a part of nature. And to to betray nature is to betray us. To save nature is to save us. Because whatever you're fighting for, racism or poverty, feminism, gay rights, or any type of equality, it won't matter in the least. Because if we don't all work together to save the environment, we will be equally extinct. So. Hey guys, for the past several weeks, I've been here in Africa, the heart of Africa, witnessing the horrific destruction of the rainforest, which inspired me to write this piece. Why are forests being destroyed at such an enormous rate? For this. Today we live in a world where destroying trees makes you money. So what can we normal people do about it? One way to directly fight the destruction is to stand for trees. By standing for trees, not only can you save the lives of trees, help forest communities, and protect the rights of animals to live in their homes, but you will also balance the amount of pollution that you yourself give off with your everyday activities, making you a part of the solution and not the problem. This is the option that I chose, but whatever way that you choose to stand for trees, do it. Because a wise man once said, when the rivers are all dried up and the trees cut down, Man will then realize that he will not be able to eat money. As always, we thank you for watching and ask you again to join us when next we speak. Good night. I'm sorry, I um, That's not right. I know, between ask and you, this should be that. And ask that. Oh, boy. And ask that you join us again when next we speak. Really? And ask we that. Evolved. Okay, yeah, you that's right. petty. <laughs> that's petty. <laughs> that's petty. That's petty. That that's petty. Can change what he said, but go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Tony's got a petty spirit on him too. No, you go. Tony got 52. a petty spirit. Pe Come on. Fifty-two year old petty. <laughs> oh, oh 50, fifty-four. Fifty-seven. Yeah. Where, where's that? That go? <laughs> okay, got it. As always, we thank you for watching and ask that you again. <laughs> <laughs> and ask that you again. That doesn't ask, make sense. It doesn't make sense. Look, they took away. have to retype it. Look, yeah. that did not make sense. But you, I, don't you know this by heart? Ask again. I, I did it you. right the first time. We ask time. that you join it. us again when next we speak. I did, I did it right the first time. He doesn't time. even need the script. Yeah, that's a lot. Child, just watch next week. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I did it. Why are you retyping it? Thank you. Thank you. I'm going to go home and learn this with my gospel this music. This is so <laughs> petty. That you. How about if we do something different and have one of the cast members do it before we go? We could all do it without the script. I know. Ooh. That, Ooh. Was, Ooh. Wow. that was petty. That was petty. Wait a minute. Wow. I was about to say, okay. Oh, it wasn't. I'm never <laughs> passive aggressive. I love when you tap your foot when you say it. Because yeah. it's like you. Ask that you. You, you being intimidated by this. Just let it flow. Okay. Okay. As always, we thank you for watching. We ask that you join us again. What? Oh, that's going to be. Together? <laughs> choir. As always, we thank you for watching and we ask that you join us when next we speak. Thank you, Riley. Again. Oh. <laughs> I didn't even read that, though, but like. Oh. I wasn't here most of the last season. <laughs> Um, okay. I'm just going to chime in when you guys say we speak. Because okay, I don't okay. know all the other stuff in between. Four, three, two. 
as, as always, always, we thank, thank you for watching and, and ask that you join us when next we speak. Can we try that one more time in the Can you look at the camera? Oh, God, he's so, so petty. <laughs> so now you know what petty okay, is. Okay, so. a first hand lesson of what I haven't petty been is. looking at this camera all night. And, okay. But now I got the read. I can't read like that. As, As always, we thank, thank you for watching and we ask that you join us when next we speak. Thank <laughs> you.